What is going on guys and welcome back to another episode of Club and Country. This is the 15th episode in this series and in today's episode guys we are of course starting season 2 in Club and Country World with Paris FC. Of course in the first season we got promoted to the top tier of French football, finishing the season undefeated as star striker and new captain Thierry Ambrose scoring 37 goals. So into Ligue 1 for the first time with Paris FC and what did the board want? Well they wanted to avoid relegation obviously, reached around the 32 stage in the Coupe Nationale, the Coupe de Ligue and we've been given a measly budget of 2.7 million pounds so I'm not going to complain about it because this is a road to glory career mode and obviously therefore our budget's going to be quite small in the first couple of seasons but 2.7 million pounds isn't going to do too much for us obviously so a little bit frustrated about that but again I can't complain because you know what was I expecting 50 million pounds or something obviously not we're not like our rivals PSG so can't really complain 2.7 million pounds we might be able to pick up one or two decent players but we'll have to wait until see I'm uh, planning on some decent transfers anyway if we can try and accumulate some money elsewhere. Uh, still following that you see Fernandez, Zidane's son has indeed gone back to Real Madrid and also two players came in on pre-contracts as well. Johan Martial and also Tristan has come in uh, as well. Two of these players coming in on pre-contracts here. As you can see Bogle is wanted by Werder Bremen and of course we say no. So you can see the stats here of Martial and Tristan. Martial, Anthony Martial's brother 25 years old centre-back, 67 overall. Looks pretty decent for a free agent not too bad stats there and and he'll probably partner JJ at the back this season. And also Tristan as well, Tristan Dingome. 68 overall left midfield, 25 years old. Looks pretty versatile. I don't know why, but this guy reminds me of Coquelin for some reason. Uh, Arsenal fans, feel free to, you know, shoot me for that. I don't know why exactly he does. But either way, he looks okay. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm happy to get those both in on free transfers. And I discussed them in the January transfer window in the last season as well. Those two players right there, they're never going to be stars in this Paris FC side. But in the first couple of seasons, in their, uh, in their you know, the first couple of seasons for the club they'll be okay they'll be decent squad members and first team players of the first season presumably so we'll take it on free transfers we're not too fussed about those two signings we know they were going to be amazing when they came in and we'll take them on relatively low wages uh, still so you see the squad report right here and the look at the squad as well obviously a ton of players did get released by Paris FC loads of foreign players are out on loan and all of them had only one year left on their contracts so they just got released and we never gave them new contracts uh, also last season loads of you guys kept on telling me to check the free agents for French players and there were none whatsoever and I wanted to prove that point as well. There are still no French free agents. The only one there is a, uh, a central defence midfielder who we released last season, who, of course, we couldn't re-sign anyway as approaches get blocked from a player when you release into the free agents pool. So, yeah, no French free agents, sadly. And we'll have to rely on youth players, loan deals, and some very cheap deals if we need to get more players together into the side. Uh, still following out some more bids here for a couple new players. Uh, you saw Ambrose wanted by Derby County there. That's obviously never going to happen. And also, Boger is wanted again, and we reject all offers. But our goalkeeper here, Alexis, Alexis, the 74 overall 31 year old goalkeeper. He won player of the competition last season for um, the League Two season. He's a 31-year-old goalkeeper, 74 overall. He was fantastic last season. He played 33 league games and only let in 13 goals. Absolutely fantastic record. But I did discuss it right at the end of last season. And I did say that because AB, our youth team goalkeeper, has been promoted to the first team now, I've given him the number one jersey. He's got the exciting prospect tag. He's only a few ratings lower than our goalkeeper. I've decided that what I'm going to do is cash in on this goalkeeper, who, of course, led the league in clean sheets last season, was fantastic for us. He's growing as as well despite being 31 years old I'm going to cash in on our experienced goalkeeper despite how good he was last season and put all my trust and all my faith in AB and also Fabio Miguel the other youth team goalkeeper as well so it's going to be a risky strategy this one because that goalkeeper was fantastic for us last season but AB got promoted towards the end of last season he kept five clean sheets in five games so I'm going to trust my 17 year old goalkeeper I'm going to sell on the 31 year old goalkeeper try and raise around three to 3.5 million pounds for him and and wait and see what these clubs say. Because tons and tons and tons of clubs are going to be offer, offering bids for him. That's not a real surprise. He had a great season last year. He continues to grow. He was in a really good form. Tons of clubs will be interested. And if we can get around three to three and a half million pounds for him, I'll definitely take that. So that's the plan for this season with Paris FC. 2.7 million pounds wasn't that much to begin with. But if we can get three and a half or three million pounds for our goalkeeper, we'll take that and then reinvest the money in other areas of the squad. Because we don't need two goalkeepers that are 70 plus rated in this 
this Paris FC squad. It's a nice luxury to have to know that if one player gets injured or suspended, you can bring on the other goalkeeper and he'll do just as good of a job. But with Paris FC, we need as much money as possible. And of course, I'm not going to sell the best youth player we've got in the team right now. So we may as well sell the older guy instead. So he's going to go to Granada most likely as they matched a £3.5 million bid. We will definitely take that. And hopefully for us, he does choose that club as well as I counter offered lower bids with uh, other teams. But uh, anyway, if he goes to Granada for £3.5 million, pounds, we'll definitely take that money, reinvest it in other areas of the squad and look at bringing in some other players in different positions. Because again, I will say that he was fantastic last season. He, like Ambrose, were, you know, those two were the best players of the season last year. He and Ambrose were fantastic, but we don't need two goalkeepers that are 70 plus rated. AB is the future of this club in the goalkeeper position. We may as well sell him now, get as much cashies for him as we can and uh, start reinvesting in other areas of the squad. And so as you can see, he does end up going to Granada for three and a half million pounds. So we'll see three million pounds pounds of that. That adds to our 2.7 million pounds initial transfer budget. So 5.7 million pounds now here with Paris FC. And after we lost our final group stage game as well in the preseason tournament, we still did progress in second place. And that gives us a little bit more money as well. I think it was around 500,000 pounds. So that's an extra three and a half million pounds right there to add 2.7 million pounds. That gives us, how bad is my maths? About 6.2 million pounds. I think that's right. So that's pretty decent. You know, a little bit more money raised here with Paris FC or a lot of money raised considering Paris FC's um, very, very low wealth and very, very low amount of uh, money here. So we'll take that. We also send our scout back out to France for another nine-month mission as well. He picks up some pretty decent players during his first nine months, so hopefully he'll pick up some decent ones too. I could possibly buy a five-star experience and five-star judgment scout, but to be honest, that scout we've got right now, three-star experience and four-star judgment, he may be two and one star lower than the best scout you could possibly have, best youth scout you could have at five-star and five-star, but he still picked up some pretty decent players last season. Obviously, no better than the goalkeeper AB. We've also got a defender in our academy who looks pretty decent as well. So I'm going to trust him once again to do really well for us this season on a nine-month mission and uh, wait and see what he says. Uh, still following out, putting some bids here for Lucas Hernandez, Moussa Dembele, and also Alexis Blin of well of Atletico Madrid, FC Ingolstadt, where Dembele plays now, and uh, also Toulouse too. We inquire about these three players here. We put in bids under the valuation of the players, and we shall wait and see what they say. Uh, also as well, Olivier Boscagli of Nice too. These are players we look at last season but we never ended up getting hold of them just because our finances are pretty low but now we've got around the six million pound mark that's that's enough to assign at least one or possibly two of those players at least so we wait and see what those clubs say there after putting those bids in as you can see sadly for us they weren't really happy with our initial under devaluation bids and unsurprisingly do come back to us and just reject the offers so that's not a real surprise we wasn't expecting to do anything other than that really but um, either way we still could get hold of them as we'll put in new bids very soon but uh, so we played the semi-final of our preseason tournament and we did get through it as well. So some more tournament prize money for us as we progress to the final. We could potentially win our first ever trophy with Paris FC in a simulated tournament. How funny would that be? But uh, still, as you can see, more bids for the players we put in inquiries for there. That's not a real surprise. But I did decide to put in a bid for this guy, though. I've read some comments from this uh, from you guys, uh, leaving loads of comments for me uh, in the first 14 episodes. This guy's name came up quite a lot. Saint Maximine, who was on loan at Hanover, I do believe, last season is now back at Monaco. 68 overall striker, who I do believe starts off at 64 overall. He can also play left wing and left midfield as well. He's pretty pacey and at 18 years old too. I'm sure he'll grow and pretty, pretty, be a pretty decent player with some good potential. He would be a really good signing for us. We put in a valuation bid of £1.1 million and we shall wait and see what Monaco say. Whilst also putting a new bid for the former Fulham striker, Moussa Dembele. And following that, we did play the pre-season tournament final. This is the side that we lost to in the final game in the group stage. And as you can see, then Gome made did equalise for us after falling behind 17 minutes in. We took it all the way to penalties after we scored a late winner through Ambrose, or so we thought, and then two minutes later, did you see the name of the player that scored for the uh, for the opposition? Chevalier? Where have I heard that name before? Why is he coming back to haunt me? What's going on here? Chevalier? It just had to be, didn't it? But uh, still, we do lose the final of the preseason tournament. Pretty upset about that. We didn't get any more prize money, either, which was kind of annoying, but either way, at least we got to the final. Got around uh, 1.5 million pound in prize money in total. That's pretty good to see. And also Monaco came back to us also as well regarding a 1.1 million pound bid for uh, Ma uh, Maximine, uh, Saint Maximine, and they said that was okay, which is fantastic. So we offer him a couple of contracts. He declines them both, but as you'll see in just a moment's time, he does end up accepting a third one after having cold feet from the first two contracts we offered them. He wanted to be known as a crucial first team player. He believes he's good enough uh, to be just as good as Thierry Ambrose was last season. So we offer him the contract he wants 
points and St. Maximin is going to come in for £1.1 million. So he becomes our first signing of this season if you don't count the two pre-contract players and what a deal that is. £1.1 million for a 19-year-old, sorry, not an 18-year-old, a 19-year-old uh, 68 overall striker that can also play left wing and left mid as well. I think that is an absolute bargain. I think that's an absolute steal right there. A really awesome signing because even if he doesn't do too well for us and doesn't grow too many ratings, we could still potentially sell him on for a profit as early as January. So, you know, he's already gone up in the valuation by 200 grand. So I'm totally happy with this deal. Four-star weak foot, four-star skills, high medium work rates, striker left wing and left mid positions, only 19 years old. I'm really looking forward to using this guy this season. I think he's going to be really good for us. Whether I play him on the left wing or the CAM role, possibly, depends on what formation I play this year, or up top with Thierry Ambrose, I haven't decided yet, but I'm still very happy with that signing. I think that is an absolute bargain, and I'm sure you guys agree with me as well. Uh, still, the media predictors will finish 19th this season, so get relegated back to League 2. Hoping that's not going to happen. Don't particularly want to go back down to the French second division, but uh, we'll have to wait and see. I think we'll do better than that. Personally speaking, I predict we'll probably finish a mid-table this season. Nothing amazing, so our squad is still in the early stages, but I think we can finish mid-table this season, around 12th, 13th, 14th place. I'd say 9th, 10th is the absolute highest than the roof we can get to, really, or ceiling, I should say, we can get to. But, um, you know, 13th, 14th, or possibly 12th as well, I'd say we'll probably finish around there come the end of the season. I don't think it'll be 19th, at least I certainly hope so, but uh, we'll have to wait and see. Uh, still more bids for more players. Clement Linglet, uh, also a new bid for Boscagli, and also Sissako as well from Monaco, who we looked at last season, the 69 overall 21-year-old right back, and also a third bid for Moussa Dembele. Would love to get this guy in. I think he, playing alongside Thierry Ambrose, would be a great striking partnership, those two. I think those two would work together really nicely and possibly play St. Maxime, uh, Saint Maximin somewhere else. And also, as you can see, the final stuff you will see is that Monaco and FC Ingolstadt did accept bids for Sissako and Dembele of £500,000 and £1.5 million respectively. So possibly for those two players for £2 million to join St. Maximin for £1.1 million, that would be £3.1 million in total for all those three players. These could be really good signings for us and we'll hopefully grab those up come the start of the next episode where we'll be playing our first games in League 1. But that does it in the episode though, guys. So thank you very much for watching the video. I really hope you have enjoyed it. If you're enjoying today's episode of Club and Country, then please do leave a like. That is, of course, much appreciated. It really does help my channel out. And I'll see you for the next episode of Club and Country where we'll be starting a new season off with our first games in League 1 very soon.